Yo, what's good guys? This is Theo here. Welcome back to part 21 of Introduction to C++ Programming here on sololearn.com. Uh, next up, so this is uh, this going to be part 21 and we are on arrays. So let's get started. So an array is a data structure used to store uh, data, obviously, but it may be useful to think of an array as a collection of variables that are all of the same type as opposed to JavaScript. Um, you know, don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, right? But in JavaScript, in your array, you can store any sort of data type. Uh, but C++, that's not, that's not the case. So instead of declaring multiple variables and storing individual values, you can declare a single array to store all the values. When declaring an array, specify its element type as well as the number of elements it will hold. So this int, uh, here's the syntax. You declare your data type or what kind of data you want your array to hold, uh, and then the name of it, and then these brackets, and then obviously the final delimiter or the final uh, parameter it's going to take is uh, the size of your array. So you have to give it that memory allocation um, you know, on, upon creation. Uh, in the example above, variable A was declared as an array of five integers. Uh, you can also initialize the array by specifying the values it holds. So here's very similar syntax, except for we're also using this array initializer syntax where after we set it equal to the values we want. And because this is five, we're going to you know, put five values in here. We could do less than five or five, but we're going to get a uh, runtime error if we do more than, uh, or not, sorry, not runtime, probably compile time error if we, uh, if we set this equal to more than five. Um, so the values provided in a comma separated list are enclosed in curly braces. The number of values between braces must not exceed the number of the elements declared within the square brackets. Makes sense. So fill in the blanks to create an array of integers named my array containing values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so we, we declare it, we set it equal to 5. Uh, we put in each of the ind indexes, and finally we're going to close it out with the brace and run that code. Awesome. So, initializing arrays. If you omit the size of the array, an array just big enough to hold the initialization is created, right? So here's a good example. We don't actually pass in the size, but we pass in five elements, right? So that, in that case, if we if we were try if we uh, tried to, you know, insert another element into an into our array, we'd also get a compile time error. This creates an identical array to the one created in the previous example. Each element or member of the array has an index which pinpoints the specific uh, point, pinpoints the element's specific position. So the array's first member has the index zero because, like many data structures or all that I can think of, um, they are all zero based. So the array's first member has the index of 0, the second has 1, and so on. Uh, so we can sort of see zero, 11 is at index 0, 45 at 1, 62 at 2, and so on. And to access array elements, index the array name by placing the element's index in square brackets following the array name. So we've declared our array, and now we say b0. We want to output that to the, to the console. So what this means is, you know, grab this array of B and uh, reach into that bucket, that data structure, and return to us this index. So it's 11. Uh, it's in a similar case, now we have three, because we're starting at zero. We go 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is going to return back to us uh, the value of 70. Awesome. So fill in the blank to print to the screen the first and the last elements of an array with size of 5. So first is going to be array of 0. And last is going to be array of four. Awesome. Uh, accessing array elements. Index numbers may also be used to assign a new value to an element, right? So here we've initialized our array. And uh, so look what we're doing, right? So currently at position two, zero, one, two, we have 62. But now we, we say, okay, um, okay, see, okay, compiler, we want to, you know, grab this array of B and update position 2 to now store the integer of 42. And this assigns a value of 42 to the array's third element, or index 2. And always remember that the list of elements always begins with the index of 0. So that can be kind of confusing when you first get started out. Even sometimes it happens to me. Um, the array in C++ starts counting from 0. Awesome. All right, guys. So that was it for um, lesson uh, 21 here on solarn.com introduction to C++. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment, and please subscribe and support the channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Take care.